second. Okay guys, welcome back. So we're going to start with another module, but with the same chapter, which is all about the strain. So this time we are going to discuss all about statically indeterminate members. So ano ba yung ibig sabihin natin when we say statically indeterminate? So bago lahat, again, regards lang sa mga asamaan ko, sina Engineer Jake Maramot. Engineer April Jan Montilla. So, thank you sa paggawa ng mga module and PowerPoint na ito. Okay, so let's proceed with the next slide. Wala palang animation. <laughs> okay, so... So, what do we mean when we say statically indeterminate? So, basahin natin guys yung description. So, when the reactive forces or the internal resisting forces over a cross-section exceed the number of independent equations of equilibrium. So, ano nga yung equation natin for equilibrium? So, we have summation of forces. We have forces X, forces Y. And we also have the summation of moment. So, this working equation is yung ating equation for equilibrium. So, the structure is called st statically indeterminate. Okay? So, sinasabi lang dyan that yung iyong mga available equation of equilibrium, so, nalampasan ng mga unknown yung available equation. So, ibig sabihin, kulang. So, yun yung definition for statically indeterminate. So, saan ba tayo kukuha ng ibang equation? So, dito papasok yung ating diniscuss nung nakaraang sessions which is the relation that depend on the elastic deformation in the members so dyan papasok si strain okay okay so next slide ayan so si delta or yung uh, mas kilala sa tawag na plae okay so sunod nating slide so Ano ba yung uh, best way to describe yung mga sample problems na to? So, ano ba yung kailangan nating malaman na principle when we illustrate this type of problem? The next slide. So, the cases are so varied that they can best be described by sample problems illustrating the following principle. So, number one. So, to a free body diagram of the structure or a part of it, apply the equations of static equilibrium. So, dun nga sa ating SRB, di ba, gumagawa tayo ng free body diagram. And from that, inaalam natin yung mga unknown na mapapalabas natin using the equations of static equilibrium. Using the equations of static equilibrium. So, si summation of forces X, forces Y, and summation ng moment. Now, if there are more unknowns than independent equations of equilibrium, obtain additional equation from the geometric relations between the elastic deformation produced by the loads. So, sasabihin natin na magdi-deform dapat yung iyong system na yun. Okay? Para makapagpalabas ulit tayo ng isa pang equation or two para malaman natin yung mga anong. So, to, to define these relations clearly, you will find it helpful to draw a sketch that exaggerates the magnitude of the elastic deformation. So, guys, ito yung sinasabi ko from the previous videos. So, kasi yung ating mga deformation naman, sobrang diit naman talaga niyan eh. Kung i-scale mo siya, eh, napakaliit, mahirap siyang i-visualize. So, mas maganda, exage exage mo siya dun sa drawing para mas madali para sa inyong i-analyze yung figure. Okay, so para mas maunawaan kung ano ba yung statically indeterminate problems, mag-try tayo mag-solve ng mga sample problems.
Okay guys, so let's start with our first problem for this statically indeterminate members. So we have here a short concrete post, which is shown in the figure. It's reinforced actually with six symmetrically placed steel bars. So meron ka daw ditong bakal. Ito daw is a column. When we say column, poste. Ayan yung mga poste ng bahay. Ano? So sa loob meron ka daw anim na bakal. Symmetrically placed around the column. Okay, so each bar has an area of 600 mm squared. If the applied load P is 1000 kN, ito. So first, assume... Ah, sorry. So first, compute the stress developed in each material. Okay. So use the mo following moduli of elasticity for steel, which is 200 gigapascal, and for concrete, which is equals to 14 gigapascal. For letter B, assume the allowable stress for steel is 120 megapascal, and concrete is 6 megapascal. Compute the maximum safe ASHA load P that may be applied. Okay, so meron tayong dalawang condition dito. Una, so ang hinahanap is yung stress in each material. And pangalawa, nagbigay siya ng iyong allowable stresses. So ang pinapahanap dito is yung maximum safe ASHA load P. <clears throat> okay, so i-discuss muna natin yung problem. So meron kang 300 by 300 square column. So sa loob nito, meron kang anim na... 600 mm squared na bakal. Apply that. Applied to that column is a 1000 kN axial load. So, mapapansin nyo guys, may meron tayong bearing plate. So, ano ba yung purpose nung bearing plate mo? So, ang purpose nito is para ma-distribute niya dun sa materials na nandito sa ating column. Kasi kung ang gagawin mo is idiretso mo si 1000 kN, ang mangyayari dito lang siya mag-aact dun sa gitna. So kapag nangyari yun, ang magkekerry lang ng load is yung concrete, yung bakal, wala siyang dadalhin. And kung concrete yan, yung concentrated lang siya dun sa gitna. That's why naglagay siya ng bearing plate para ma-distribute niya along dun sa column, dun sa concrete, and at the same time dun sa anim na bakal. So ano lang to ha? Wala lang to. Again, ang purpose lang nito is para ma-distribute lahat ng load dun sa materials na nandun sa loob ng column. Okay, so ano bang una natin gagawin dito? So ano nga sabi dun sa ating step-by-step -step na principle? So una, di ba gagawa ka ng free body diagram? And from that, i-apply mo equi equation of equilibrium. Okay, so... Ito guys, ang gagawin natin... Um, Gawa tayo ng free body diagram. As you can see here, gumawa siya ng exploratory section. So, nag-section siya dito para malaman natin yung mga internal forces na dadalhin ng concrete and ng steel. Okay? Ito yan. So, gagawin ko, idodrawing ko lang siya na naka-front view. Okay? Ayan. So, hinarap ko lang sa atin. Okay. So here, again, meron kang bearing plate. Again, ang purpose niya lang is para ma-distribute yung load. And andito si concentrated load. Okay, so sa loob, meron ka nga anim na baal. So, i-drawing lang natin. Oops, tumabing eh. Okay So, yung another tree is nasa likod lang yan. Ano? So, ito yung mga bakal natin. Doblin lang natin para kita. Okay. <laughs> Magkakaiba yung size. Ayan. So, again, yung tatlo ha. Baka hanapin nyo. Again, nasa likod lang siya. So, pinakita ko lang yung nasa harap. Yung tatlo. And then, yung remaining tree is nasa likod. So, wag malilito. So, isection ko lang. Kung wari, pinutol natin ganyan. Okay. So, again, the reason kaya tayo nag-section is to determine yung mga internal force na dadarhin nung o magkakari doon sa 1,000 kN. So, nasan si 1,000? 
1000 kN. Okay, so since symmetric 'yan. So ibig sabihin, uh, first, so unahin natin yung concrete. So since symmetric 'yan, meron ka ditong internal force. So kung ito'y pababa, so ano yung magiging internal force natin ko concrete? Pataas dapat siya. So P of concrete And then yung ating steel, since symmetrically naman siya na distribute along do sa iyong uh, post o do sa column, so pataas lang din siya. Ano? So dito ko na lang ilagay na. So meron ka din na pataas. Okay? So that will be your P of the steel. Okay. So if you're going to apply the equation of equilibrium, so ano lang ba yung magagamit natin? Di ba sa mission ng forces y lang? So kapag inapply mo yung equation of equilibrium, saying that all upward forces as positive, ano yung ma-form nating equation? Base dito sa ating free body diagram na ginawa. So di ba ang equation lang na magagawa natin is P steel plus P ng concrete is equals to 1,000 kilo newton. Okay. So I will name this at my, as my equation number 1. So other than that, wala ka na magkukuha na equation do sa equilibrium. So ano nga sabi do sa ating number 2 principle? So kung wala ka na makuhang equation, wala ka na mapagkunan, so yung remaining equation will be coming from dun sa ating relation ng iyon deformation o yung plae. Okay, so paano ba mangyayari doon? So because of this load na inapply natin itong 1000 kilo newton, sasabihin natin siya na magkaaroon siya ng deformation. Okay? So ibig sabihin if you have an axial load, compressive force na inapply, ibig sabihin yung iyong poste ay ano mangyayari? Tama, mako-compress siya or iimpes. Ano? So ibig sabihin, so dito ko na lang i-drawing since limited lang yung space natin. So, ibig sabihin yan, guys, ganito yung magiging itsura niya. So, di ba ito yung ating initial position? Ayan. So, before, yung height ng column mo is ganyan. So, yan yung initial position niya before. Tama? So, ngayon, nung in-apply mo yung load, anong nangyari? Yung plate mo, yung bearing plate, pumunta dito. Ano? So, unti-unti, bumaba siya. So, let's just say na exage natin yung drawing. Ah. So, nangyari, yung steel plate mo, andito na ngayon. Ayan. So, ito na yung steel plate. Okay? And then, yung load mo, andito ngayon si load P na 1,000 kilo newton. Ibig sabihin, this will be your, eto. Ayan. So, this will be the final position ng iyong bearing plate. So, ibig sabihin, ito, nagkaroon ka dito ng deformation. So, ito ba sa diagram? Okay. So, ayan, nagkaroon ka ng deformation. Ayan. So, ito yung magiging deformation mo. Okay. So, ang tanong, ano yung magiging relation ng deformation ni steel at yung deformation ni column? So, kung pareho lang sila nang ibinaba. Tama. If that is the case, therefore, I could say that yung equation number 2 will be coming from the relation of this, of their deformation, or the deformation between the two materials. So, the deformation for the steel is equals lang pala dapat kay deformation ni concrete. So, this will be our equation number 2. So, knowing that the equation for delta is ano nga ulit? So, plae, di ba? So, PL all over AE. So, the PL all over AE of the steel is equals lang din dun sa PL all over AE for the column. Ah, concrete. Sorry. Okay, so substitute lang natin. Uh, anong mapapalabas natin equation? So, we have here P steel. So, ano yung length ng steel rod? So, anyway, 
hindi naman binigay but since pareho lang sila ng height so let's just say that this is equals to L tama so kung L yan makakansel lang din yon kasi nga the length of the steel is just equals to dun sa length ng cold concrete okay, so cancel lang yan over area so ano yung magiging area natin for steel so given naman yung kanyang uh, cross-sectional area for each steel steel bar so that is 600 kaso guys, ilan nga yung ating bakal? tama, anim. so multiply mo rin siya ng 6 and for the modulus of elasticity given naman dyan as 200 gigapascal so again, i-convert natin siya to megapascal so times mo lang ng 1000 or times 10 to the 3 so equals do sa P ng concrete over uh, area ng concrete. Okay, guys. Ano yung cross-sectional area natin? So, diba square column siya? So, the area is 300 times 300. Okay? But, ang tanong, ito ba yung area na natin? Yung 300 by 300? Okay, so, tama. Tama na mali. <laughs> so, hindi pa dito tayo natatapos. Ha? Kasi ito, yung area ng concrete. Kung wala yung bakal. Kaso nga, meron kang anim na bakal sa loob. Tama? So, dapat, ibabawas natin yung laman niya na bakal. So, minus 6 times 600. And then, multiply mo lang siya ng modulus sa elasticity ng concrete na 14 gigapascal. O, 14 times 10 to the 3. Okay? So, ang gawin ko guys, i-transpose ko na lang sa kabila itong part ng equation na to. Or, ang mangyayari, kunin ko lang yung pambura. So, ito, magiging minus lang. Okay? And then, dito, lagyan natin ng equals to 0. So, this will be our equation ito yung magiging panibago nating equation number 2. So with that, we can now solve for the value of the P steel and P concrete. So two equation, two unknown or by elimination. So equation 1 and equation 2. So solve equation 1 and equation 2. So what will be the value of the P steel and what will be the value for P concrete? Okay guys, so ang gagamitin kong calcule is yung ano ha. Is yung merong equation. Wala pa yung calcule. Oh. So since kaya yung ating naka-upload ng calcule is yung uh, walang equation. So gamitin natin to. Though pwede naman nga siyang by elimination kaso dito nang natitirang space. So, I know naman maalam naman kayo kung manually nyo gagawin yan. But, gamitin na natin yung calcube para mabilis tayo. So, mode. Okay, guys. So, habang pinipindot natin, ano? Mag-music muna tayo.
Okay, so yung pinang steel is na ah, pa check na lang three seven three one three four point three three seven three one three four point three kasi ito yung haka newton so i convert ko na lang guys sa dera cho convert ko na siya kasi kasi eh. So that is 373.1343 kilo newton and for the concrete so that is 626.8657 kilo newton okay so since may value na tayo ng p steel and p concrete uh masasolve na natin yung stress in steel and stress ni concrete. Okay guys, so for steel, ang gagamitin nyo lang area is ito ha. And for concrete, ito. Okay, so what will be the stress in steel and concrete developed? 0.1343 divided by 600 mm. So the stress in steel is 103.6484 to mega pascal. So ang ginawa lang dito guys, yung 373, minultiply ko ng 1000 and then dinibide ko dito para mega pascal yung sagot. And yung isa, 626.8657 divided by 300.5. Six times six. So six two six point eight six five seven times ten to the three divided by three hundred times three hundred minus six times six. The stress in concrete is 7.25539 mega pascal. Okay, so check lang natin if correct. Okay guys, so this is our answer for the stress in steel, 103.6484 and stress in concrete as 7.25539. So this is our final answer. Okay, so next for condition letter B. Ay, tandaan na lang ang sagot na to. So, paano naman daw kapag the allowable stress for steel is 120 megapascal and for concrete is 6 megapascal. So, what will be the maximum safe actual load P that may be applied? Okay guys, so pawiin ko muna ito. Again, we will use the same figure but I think we'll, we will also use the uh, the same equations be exact. Ang gagawin lang natin, manipulate natin ng kaunti para ma-check itong condition na to. So, pawiin ko lang itong portion na hindi natin kailangan, ha? Okay. Ito is only for the equilibrium equation. So, to check for this stress, we need to use this equation. Ito. Okay. So, i-equate lang natin dito. Ito, i-move natin dito, guys. So, we have, again, P over A. Ito. Diba, stress lang yan. So, stress ni steel. Uh, over the modulus of elasticity na 200 gigapascal or 200 times 10 to the 3. So equals to stress ni concrete over the modulus of elasticity which is equals to say 14 gigapascal or 14 times 10 to the 3. 
Okay, so I will say this as my equation uh, 2a. 2a. Okay. So, isusulat ko na lang ng green ha, para at least madaling ma-identify kung alin tayo. Okay guys, so kung maalala, di ba meron tayong condition dito? So, ang allowable stress mo for steel is 120 and yung for concrete is 6 megapascal. So guys, ganito kasi yung magiging kwento dyan. Do sa condi condition letter B, sinabi meron siyang allowable. When we say allowable, ito yung maximum na pwedeng stress na makeri ng bawat material. So for steel, hanggang 120 lang siya. And for concrete, hanggang 6 megapascal lang siya. Siguro ang iisipin ng iba, Sir, pwede kaya siguro na ganito yung gawin natin. Di ba stress, sabi mo nga, is P over A. So kung ganyan yung equation, di ba pwede kong gamitin to? Itong equation na to. Kung saan, magiging ano lang siya. So di ba stress ni steel, so 120 i-multiply ko lang ng uh, multiply ko lang ng area ng steel given naman tapos yung isa sir i-multiply ko yung 6 and then area ng concrete so makahanap ko na yung P so if ito yung magiging uh, condition mo this is incorrect kasi sabi nga dito ito yung allowable it doesn't mean na sabay nilang marireach itong 120 at 6 megapascal. Meron at meron diyang isang mauunang ma-reach yung kanyang allowable stress. And then yung isa, uh, siguro mga almost dun sa allowable stress. Pero guys, tandaan that since ito nga yung allowable, never ka dapat nalalampas dyan sa allowable. So dito, magkaaroon tayo ng checking. Okay? So first, gamitin ko na yung blue. So, alin sa tingin nyo ang unang marireach yung kanyang allowable stress? Alin yung unang uh, mas affected dun sa change in load o dun sa load na dadalhin nila? Okay, so mag tayo. Wala namang problema. Again, if may lumampas naman, ibig sabihin mali yung napili natin. So, let's just assume. Doon naman tayo magaling mag-assume. Tapos sa huli, masasaktan lang. So, consider that yung steel natin will reach yung 120 megapascal. Okay? So, what will be the stress in the concrete? Okay? So, substitute mo lang siya dito. Okay, guys? So, 120 over 200 times 10 to the 3. So, equals dun sa stress ni concrete over 14 times 10 to the 3. So, what will be the stress in the concrete? So, check natin. Gamitin natin yung calc Q. So, we have 120 times 14 times 10 to the 3. And then, divided by 200 times 10 to the 3. So, ano sagot natin for concrete. Okay guys, so ayan, so nagkataon tama agad yung ating nakuhang sagot. So the answer is 8.4 ay mali pala. 8.4 mega pascal. So bakit ko nasabing mali? Okay guys, kasi kung mapapansin nyo dito, ang sabi nga doon sa concrete, 6 mega pascal lang yun. Ang napalabas natin is greater than 6 mega pascal. So ano magig mangyayari dito sa ating system? Madudurog na yung concrete mag fail na yung structure natin. So, hindi pwede. Ibig sabihin, uh, hindi mangyayari na ganito yung ating condition. So, tama pala dapat na consider natin yung case 2. So, consider yung concrete ang mag -re reach ng kanyang allowable stress first. So, what will be the stress in the steel? So, ganun lang din yung gawin mo. Ano? So, substitute mo lang dito. So, dito ko na lang isulat. So, stress ni steel. So, yan nga yung unknown over yung iyong 200 times 10 to the 3. So, that is equals to stress ni concrete, which is 6 over 14 times 10 to the 3. 
So what will be the stress in still? Pwede namang 6 times 200 na lang. Cancel na natin yung 1,000 divided by 14. Ayan. So we have 85 point... Seven one four three. Eighteen point seven one four three mega pascal. So as you can see, that is less than one twenty. So ito yung tama sagot. Big sabihin kapag ang concrete mo is nakaramdam na ng six mega pascal, ang madidevelop pa lang na stress kay steel ay eighty five point seven one four. For three. So with that, yan yung gagamitin nating actual stress para mahanap natin yung maximum safe actual load P. So dito guys, ang nangyari ngayon, wala na si 1000. Yan yung hinahanap ngayon. Okay? So paano mo gagawin yun? So, dyan mo ngayon papasok yung equation number 1 kanina. Kung saan P steel plus P concrete is equals to P. Mapapatan lang to ng P. Kasi yun na nga yung unknown. O P max. Okay. So magpawi lang ako ng uh, ilang uh, portion dito. Siguro ito na lang yung pinagkamalian. Yung hindi tumama sa condition. Pawiin ko lang guys yan ha. Pambura. Okay, so apply ulit natin to. So, diba P steel plus P concrete is equals to P. So, P steel plus P concrete is equals to P max. Again, yung P max yung unknown. So, again, stress. Ito, alam natin yung principle na yan. So, stress in steel. So, that is, ito yung gagamitin ha. 85.7143. Kasi ito yung na-develop kapag ito yung na-reach ni concrete. So, 85.7143 multiply by the area. So, anim na 6 times 600. And then, plus P concrete. So, yung ating stress in concrete is 6 multiply by 300 times 300. So, that will be equals to P max. So what will be the value of your Pmax of the maximum safe load P? Ito din lang natin. So 85.7143 times 6 times 600. Guys, may nakalimutan pala tayo dito ah. So 300 times 300. And then subtract yung ating... minus yung 6 times 600 yung 6 na bakal hindi na naman kasya minus 6 times 600 okay so what is the Pmax So plus uh, 6 times quantity, so 300 times 300 minus 6 times 600. Okay, so the answer is ilan. So divide natin ng 1000. So, siya ay 826 point nine seven one five kilo newton. Ayan. Okay, so check lang natin kung tama. 
So guys, sa yung mga practice problem doon sa libro ha. Again, napakaganda po ng libro ni uh, Frank of Materials ni Singer at saka ni Pytel. So again, mayroon dyan mga practice problems. So kahit hindi pa nadidiscuss, try nyo nang aralin. And sagutan yung mga practice problem doon. So malay nyo, dyan ako kumuha ng exam. Kagaya nung second sem. Malay nyo lang. Okay, so tama yung sagot natin. Okay guys, so let's proceed with the next problem. 